Okay, um, what the question was is a grade 11 um, remainder factor question theorem. Um, it was f of x was given as x cubed plus mx squared plus nx plus 6. Um, McClasey, are you there? Yeah. Oh, great. That's wonderful to have you on the show. Okay, Mikhlazi, the way that you um, gave me the question, you gave me a function in x, and um, okay. I'm sure it's what you told me, and then you said that x minus 1 was a factor of this particular function, and x plus 1 le uh, left a remainder of 8. Is that right? Okay? Yeah. All right. And the question was that you had to find the values of m and n. Okay? Yeah. All right, um, is your sound down on your TV, Mikhlazi? Can you see the TV, but it's not actually interfering with the, you listening through the earpiece? Is that okay? Okay. Okay. All right, Mikhlazi, what do you know if they tell you that X minus 1 is a factor? What do you know from that little piece of information? Uh, you, you have to good so in other words we're going to go with the f of one and we're going to substitute to one hey so tell me what it's going to read it's f at one mm -hmm. equals to one cubed yes plus m into one squared yes plus, uh, plus n. n into one mm -hmm. plus, plus six, six. Okay, now the minute that they tell you x minus 1, that's your linear factor, you know that you're going to substitute 1, but what is the critical piece of information if they tell you it's a factor? What do you know? You now know that you can set this equal to. What can you set this equal to when it's a factor? Uh, it's equal to 8. Okay, but now this one is equal to 8. It leaves a remainder of 8. So this piece, don't get confused, don't mix them. X minus 1 is a factor. So now tell me if something is a factor. So is 2 a factor of 4? Yes, because there's no remainder when we divide 2 into 4. Okay? So if there's no remainder... It means it's a factor, so we're going to set this equal to zero. And that is so, so, so important. The minute that it's a factor, we must set it equal to zero. Okay? Yeah. All right, let's tidy this up. We're going to get m plus n plus 1 plus 6 equals zero. Now, does that look tidy enough if you want to keep on working with it later? Or can you kind of add things together and make it a little bit easier for yourself? Yes. What can you do? Uh, you take the numbers to the other side. Good. Okay. So are you okay if I say m plus n is equal to minus 1 minus 6 becomes minus 7? Okay. Yes. And that's your first piece of information that you're going to need later. So we're just going to put that to the side. Now let's use this piece of information. They say x plus 1. So what are we going to substitute this time, Mikhlazi? Negative 1. Negative 1. Good. All right. So substituting negative 1, we're going to get negative 1 cubed plus m times negative 1 squared plus n times negative 1 plus 6. Now, this is the million dollar question. What must I set this equal to? Is it a factor or does it leave a particular remainder? It leaves a remainder of 8. Good. So that's why I must put this one equal to 8. eight. Okay, so the essence of the problem is once you've substituted, you have to always set it equal to the remainder. So here we set it equal to naught because there is no remainder. It's a factor. Whereas here we set it equal to 8, Mikhlazi, because they tell us that the remainder is 8. Okay? Now let's tidy this up. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 
negative 1 squared is positive 1 times m is just m. Then we get a negative n plus 6 equals 8. Okay, so that's just getting rid of all of these brackets, cubing them out and squaring them out. You following me? Yes. Okay. So now what are we going to get? We're going to get m minus n equals, now you said it's a good idea to transpose these to the other side, hey? Yes. So what is that going to become? The minus 1? Positive 1. Mm, positive 1, good. And then? When minus I, 3. Good. Right, so add up that side, that right hand side for me. What am I going to get? 8 plus uh, 1? It's equal to 3. Okay, so I'm going to get 3. Okay, so now, can you see I've now got two equations? And those two equations have both got m and n. m and n. So can you remember what our process now is in order to solve for m and n, which is what they want us to do. What do we need to do now? We can solve them simultaneously. Good. So tell me which one of these are you going to work with? Uh, equation 2. Equation 2. Okay. So tell me how you're going to rework equation 2. What's uh, it going to become? M. Mm-hmm. Is equal to 3 plus n. Excellent. Okay, now what are you going to do with that, Mukhlazi? Uh, I will substitute 3 mm -hmm. plus n where, wherever you see m. Good. So we're going to take that and we're going to substitute that into our first equation. So tell me what it's going to become. Instead of m, we're going to write 3 plus 3 n. Plus mm -hmm. n. Good. And then? Plus n. Good. Is equal to? Equal to negative 7. Good. So keep on working that down for me. So these two we can add together. So we get? 3 plus 2n. Mm-hmm. All right. Because You're absolutely fine. Keep on going. Don't lose your pace. And? Mm, 2n is equal to minus 7 minus 3. Good. Keep going. You're very thorough. Um, 2n is equal to minus 10. Uh-huh. So now all you need to do for me is solve for n. So what are you going to get for n? Uh, we, we divide both sides by 2. Yes, we do. And if we divide both sides by 2, we're going to get n is how much? Negative 5. Good. Okay, you've got one more thing to do. We've just found n, but we still need m. So how are we going to find m? Uh, we substitute. Good. And we're going to take that and we're going to substitute it back into this equation that we formed. So m is equal to 3 plus n. So m works out to be minus 2. And we've solved for m and n. Okay, thank you, Mukhlazi. Thank you very much for phoning in. And I hope that if you have any trouble next week, you're going to call us again because we're on air every day. Bye. <laughs>